Hi everyone and welcome to this presentation on degree apprenticeships. Now as a part of National Apprenticeship Week 2021 I've pulled together this presentation to provide as much information as I can about degree apprenticeships, what they're like, how to apply and where to look for them, to give young people and schools as much information about them as we can. Now degree apprenticeships are a relatively new thing, probably within the last 10 or so years they've started to become more mainstream so it is really difficult to find information on them and I'm hoping that this presentation can help answer some of the most common questions I had whilst applying for degree apprenticeships. My name is Elise Stockdale and I'm a software engineering degree apprentice. Now I thought I'd start this presentation to give you a little bit of background information about myself and how I've ended up in the role I've got today. Uh, so I studied my GCSEs and then I moved straight into my A-levels and after completing my A-levels, that's when I started my degree apprenticeship. Now my degree apprenticeship is in a software development role, so working with technology. And as you can see, I didn't study computer science at A-level, nor did I study computer science at GCSE. Which brings me to my first point, that the degree apprenticeship, if you choose to study for one, doesn't have to be in a field you've studied before, as long as you meet the criteria that they're asking for. Now on the screen as well is some of the achievements I've made and these are achievements that I would have brought up in assessment centres or interviews whilst applying for degree apprenticeships and one of those is my second down black belt in Taekwondo and then I also have more role related qualifications such as my bronze and silver STEM crest awards. At the bottom of this page as well you can see a screen grab of a website now that is a website I'm currently working on developing to provide more information about degree apprenticeships and getting roles in STEM careers. On this slide, you can see where I am now. So as I've said, I'm working as a software developer for a global IT consultancy firm. And consultancy isn't something I knew very much about until I started this degree apprenticeship, and I'll go on to that later. I'm also studying for my degree, and that is Bachelor's in Digital and Technology Solutions on the Software Engineering Pathway at Winchester University. And as well as that, I am the creator behind At The Girl In STEM on Instagram, Twitter, and on my website, as you saw on the last slide. So the most important question to answer in this presentation has to be, what is a degree apprenticeship? Now you might have heard of an apprenticeship before where you work and gain hands-on learning and experience from a role. And a degree apprenticeship is exactly that. However, alongside this work, you will also study for a full university degree. And this degree is exactly the same as a degree from any other university. However, when you study for it, you would be doing 80% of your time in the workplace and only 20% of your time at university. Now, one of the benefits of this is you will pay no tuition fees and this degree will be completely debt free. You'll also gain a full time wage whilst you're working with the company. Because of this, you get the benefits of being a student and a full time employee, and that covers anything from employee benefits from the company you work for to student discounts, much like any other student. So the first thing we're going to look at is the university portion of a degree apprenticeship. Now, as I've said, the university side takes up 20% of your time, and that can be in a number of different ways, including attending university once a week or attending on block release every couple of weeks. Now, it's dependent on the company and the university that you do the degree apprenticeship with to decide this. So if you are interested to know which it would be, you would have to speak to the company that you're applying with. The other thing to mention is you won't get to choose which university you are studying with. You have to choose the company that you'd like to complete the degree apprenticeship with and you will attend with their university. Now, on the left, we have the key course details for my degree at Winchester University. And as you can see, degree apprenticeships can take anywhere between three and six years. Now, for me, I'm completing my apprenticeship in three years, which means I complete my apprenticeship and a full university degree in the same time it would take me if I was attending university full time. Another common misconception about attending university as a degree apprentice is that you won't get a graduation ceremony, and that's not true. You will still get the other benefits of being a student, you'll get access to all the facilities on the university, and you will still get a graduation. Now, the other portion of the degree apprenticeship is, of course, your work placement, which takes up 80% of your time. And you might be wondering, how do you have enough time to complete the university degree with a full time job? Now, yes, you will be expected to do pre-session content and assignments outside of your work in university hours. But the idea is the role you have in the workplace and the technologies and the people you get to work with will help provide on the job training, which will help work towards your degree. 
On the screen, we can see a number of different companies that have offered apprenticeships in the past, and it can change from year to year who is offering apprenticeships, but it's definitely worth taking a look at these guys if any of them take your interest, as there's a good chance they might continue to have their apprenticeship schemes running. With the work side, you will have the opportunity to work with professionals in your field. For myself, that means working with software engineers who've had over 30 years experience in the sector. Not only this, you still get the support from university lecturers, but you also get the support from your managers and team whilst working in the workplace. Now, if you're anything like me, you'll be thinking that sounds too good to be true. And it does. Degree apprenticeships are a fantastic opportunity for somebody who wants real world experience and to further their studies through university. Now, on this slide, I've included just a few of the common misconceptions and myths that people have about degree apprenticeships. And the first one we can see is that you are tied with the company you completed your degree apprenticeship for. And that's not true. For myself and many other degree apprentices, we are free to leave immediately after graduation if we wished. Now, it's important to talk with the company and see if there are any costs or commitment periods after graduation, but it's unlikely. The second point is that apprentices are the easy route. And that's simply not true. Apprenticeships and degree apprenticeships are extremely competitive. Many apprenticeship schemes have thousands of applicants and hire just tens of degree apprentices. They're looking for people who are going to be great in the workplace and fantastic at university as well. So they are really looking for the best of the best. The third point on the list is that apprenticeships are low paid. Now, the national minimum wage for apprenticeships is low, but degree apprenticeships often start at about £16,500 annually, but can be anywhere from that up to £22,000 starting salary a year. The other thing as well is that some companies allow that to be increased over the years you complete your degree apprenticeship. And you'll find that many of them have you matching or exceeding graduate pay by the end of your degree apprenticeship. Another point is that apprentices don't add value to a business. Now, my experience with this is that I've been given responsibilities and tasks I didn't think I'd have the opportunity to do at work. I've been shocked by the amount of things I've had experience with and the people and the technologies I've got to work with. And this is the theme with all other degree apprentices I've spoken to. And finally, apprenticeships are only for school leavers. On my scheme, all of us are post sixth form students, but I know many apprentices at university that are starting later in their career or have had a career change and decided to move into a new sector by completing an apprenticeship. Here we have just a few of the types of apprenticeship that are offered. And as you can see, they can be with a range of different companies from IT companies, consultancy companies and companies like Jaguar and Land Rover and the F1 but they can also be in a number of different sectors and roles. And on the screen, we can see engineering roles, business management roles, and data analytics. Now it's important to note that lots of degree apprenticeships are in engineering disciplines because it's possible to have that university experience and hands-on experience. But if you were looking for apprenticeships in HR and law, they are also offered. You just might have to do a little bit more digging. So you're thinking degree apprenticeships are the right thing for you. You want to find out more where should you look to find more information and the number one place i would suggest you look is on company websites whether you have a particular company in mind or you're looking for companies or businesses in a certain sector if you have a look on their websites under their hiring or job section particularly in early careers you're likely to find information on degree apprenticeships if they have any if you can't see anything immediately it could be because their apprenticeships aren't open yet in fact, degree apprenticeships can be available at any time of the year. So it's worth emailing their careers team to see if they have one coming up in the next couple of months. Other websites you can look at are other recruitment websites such as Indeed or Not Going to Uni, but also gov.uk has lots of information on degree apprenticeships as well. Finally on that list, we have Insight Evenings, and this is something a company might offer to give more information to students about their apprenticeship schemes. So it's worth again checking on company websites for any events they might have coming up. At the bottom, we have a screen grab from the GCHQ website about their Cyber's First degree apprenticeship scheme, which is one of the fantastic opportunities for those looking to go into cybersecurity and technology. And as you can see, they provide lots of information about the qualifications you will need to gain the role and any other things you'll need or need to know before applying. What to expect whilst applying. 
Now on the right, you can see a list of the stages of application. And it's important to note here that you would unlikely to be expected to complete all of those stages for a single degree apprenticeship application. However, unlike universities where you would provide a personal statement through UCAS or directly to the university, there is not one standardised way of applying for degree apprenticeships and that application process is decided by the company you're applying for. Now, it's important to be familiar with all of these types of application because you could be asked to do any number of them for the apprenticeships you're applying for. At the top, we have application forms and they're forms that you would fill out online providing basic details about yourself, but you might also be required to answer some personal questions such as why you are a good fit for the role, what makes you want to work here and what are your skills. But you could also be asked company questions so they can get an idea of how much you know about the company and whether you've done your research before applying. After that, we have proficiency tests. And again, these can be conducted in person or online, and they can cover a number of different topics, such as written communication, numerical understanding, and your ability to quickly check for errors. Now on there as well is technical, and you could be asked to do a programming test. However, that would be if you're applying for a technical role, not if it's unrelated. At the bottom, we also have interviews. Now these interviews can be conducted over the phone, online or in person and online interviews can also be live or pre-recorded if you complete a live online interview it's exactly like it would be in person and you'll be asked questions by an assessor you might also come across pre-recorded online interviews where you're required to speak to a camera and answer a question on the screen and that recording is sent off to the company at the bottom we also have assessment centers and insight evenings now these are a way for the company to meet you in person and to give you a number of different tasks whether that be individual work or group work to get a better understanding of who you are as a person i've included this slide to give you an insight on what my life has been like as a degree apprentice now a degree apprenticeship isn't all work and study you do get to meet lots of people and you will make lifelong friends with the other degree apprentices and even the colleagues in your team at work. It's not the same as attending university. You won't be able to go out on a weeknight because you will have work the next day. But that's not to say there aren't loads of benefits of being a degree apprentice instead. On the left, we have living with friends. I moved out of my parents' house and moved away when I completed my degree apprenticeship. You don't have to stay in the location that you were born and raised. You can explore and you can take a job somewhere else especially if you take a role in consulting and for me that means I have the opportunity to travel around England and hopefully in the future travel abroad with work. Living with friends is great fun and although you can't go out during the week because you will have work the next day that doesn't mean you can't go out at the weekend and do loads of fun things like I've included on that slide. In the middle we have university now because of covid it has been difficult this year and universities have been closed but in the future we're hoping that universities will be back open again and whether you attend in block release or on the day you do get to spend that time at the university and you will get to make use of university facilities and meet other students in the rooms on the right we just have a slide on whether a degree apprenticeship is right for you and i've included some of my favorite things about the degree apprenticeship as I've said, we have opportunities to travel, hands-on learning, and that chance to develop a wide network of both experts and apprentices. But you might also get to work with an international company, which has its own benefits, and you experience the fun of working with other people in teams in completely different countries to yours. Just before we come to the end of this presentation, I've got a few next steps that you should consider if you are looking to apply for degree apprenticeships. And the first thing is to think about your key skills and qualifications. Now, for me, that consisted of compiling a Word document of all the experiences and opportunities I'd had up until the end of sixth form and what skills and qualities I'd gained from completing those. What this meant is that when it came to filling out application forms or attending interviews, I had all of these ideas fresh in my mind and I wasn't panicking on the spot. Another point is not to rush your applications. Much like you wouldn't rush a personal statement for university, make sure you take time and effort in these online application forms as they are the first screening and the first chance the company has to gauge about your abilities. 
And finally, research all of your options. If you are looking for a career in engineering or technology, there are lots of degree apprenticeships out there and you don't want to be stuck applying to too many or too little. So make sure you know what you want to apply for from the beginning. And at the bottom, we have my top tips for applying. Be prepared, be curious and be confident. Thank you guys so much for listening to my presentation and I hope you've learned something interesting you didn't know before about degree apprenticeships. Now I would encourage you to go find out more about degree apprenticeships and explore whether they are a potential path for your future and to further your career. And if they are, good luck. On this slide, I've just included a number of links that I found helpful whilst applying to degree apprenticeships, but make sure if you're looking to apply that you do as much research as you can and you explore all the different routes to find out about degree apprenticeships.